Look, Murray, I'm telling you, she said she was 18. God, she looked 30. I gotta go. Bye. Pay no attention to that. Anyway, I'm Ina Ray Hutton, and you bounced in the trailers from hell. You know, jazz may be the great American music, but it hasn't been the basis of many great American movies, even when it was more mainstream than it is today. One of the best, though, is Paris Blues from 1961, starring Paul Newman and Sidney Poitier as jazz men who've relocated to the City of Lights, where it was always held in higher regard. Adding to the authenticity is a jammin' score by Duke Ellington and Louis Armstrong on screen as Wild Man Moore. But who are they kidding? He's playing himself. Nonetheless, United Artists feared that a movie about jazz might not sell a lot of tickets. And they may have been right. So they decided to pull a bit of a fast one by selling it as a romance. Now, that wasn't cheating. There is romance with two couples to boot. But it's not the entire focus of the film, and I imagine some audiences, especially women, might have felt a bit taken. Of course, the fact that it's in black and white should have been their first clue. So let's put on our headphones and watch a questionable trailer for a terrific movie. <laughs> That was, of course, Ellington's standard Take the A Train, though in this case Take the Metro might have been more appropriate. As you can see, they waste no time focusing on its twin love stories. Paul pairs up with his real-life wife, Joanne Woodward, who, along with Diane Carroll, play a couple of Yank Femmes on a vacation that takes some mighty intriguing turns. A room in Paris can be like no other room in the world. The things they do, the things they say, you come on like this with all the guys? No, only with the special one. As you can see, this isn't exactly fluff, but it's fairly gritty, at least for the era, and certainly for Paul and Joanne. But of course, Sidney and Diane have to play it much nicer. You know, they had to be well-behaved in those days. The other nice thing about it is that it doesn't shy away from very adult themes for the era, such as Serge Rajiani's drug addiction, which is really out there and in the open. The screenplay was co-written by the great Walter Bernstein, who'd recently come off the blacklist, and as I speak, is still with us, closing in on 101. What do you want to do, wrap me up and take me home? We had a good thing going, what do you have to spoil it for? It was obviously filmed on location, with wonderful sets by Alexandre Tronaire, who, not so coincidentally, also designed another classic movie about jazz, Round Midnight, 25 years later. Nobody in this whole world is ever going to be as right for you as I was. For 12 days in Paris in the autumn. Here's a classic Poitier line reading. I love you. I love you. And we're two full minutes into the trailer before we finally get to what's really important. The music. This is a wonderful scene, an all-out cutting session with Pops called Wild Man Moore. And at its climax, director Martin Ritt cranes the camera up over the crowd, with the result that it actually compels you to rise out of your seat. It's an incredible bit of direction. Paris Blues isn't a classic romance, but if you love jazz, it's right up your alley, where most great jazz clubs can be found.